Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to day two of the Infocom 2021 virtual conference. I'm Rafi and I shall be your host for Infocom 2021 from today till Saturday. And uh, we welcome all the delegates who are joining in from across the world for the 20th edition of Infocom. The theme, as you all know, for this year is Accelerating Digital. And we have an exciting lineup of speakers for you over these three days. Uh, yesterday, we had the inaugural session where the Honorable Chief Minister of West Bengal, Ms. Mamata Banerjee, addressed us. And it was very nice having a few guests of honor also. Uh, they joined us and we had a very good inaugural session yesterday. Now, we are starting the main conference now. And uh, we are starting with the opening spotlight session on Accelerating Digital, the India Growth Story. Uh, the spotlight speaker at the session is Padma Shri, Mr. Sajeev Bhikchandani, sir, who is the founder and executive vice chairman of InfoEdge India Limited. As we all know that InfoEdge India Limited is the company that owns Nokri.com, India's leading job site. It also owns 99acres.com, jeevansathi.com, and shiksha.com. In addition, it has invested in over 40 companies, including Zomato, Policy Bazaar, Shop Kirana, and many more. Mr. Big Chandani began his uh, career working in advertising with Lintas. After working for three years, he did his uh, post-graduation from IIM Ahmedabad and joined the consumer marketing firm GlaxoSmithKline Consumer Healthcare. Uh, he then quit his job for entrepreneurship 18 months later and co-founded InfoEdge. For a brief period, he was the consulting editor of Avenues, the career supplement of the Pioneer newspaper. In 1997, InfoEdge launched Nokri.com and transformed itself into an internet company. Starting off from a servant quarter above a garage and with seed ca capital of only rupees 2000, the company grew and attracted investment from leading venture capitalists. It was the first internet company to list on the Indian stock exchanges. Today, InfoEdge employs over 4,500 people and has a market capitalization of over 11 billion US dollars. Mr. Big Chandani is actively in, uh, involved in various industry forums and is a contributor to the entrepreneurship ecosystem. He has received several awards and honors, the recent being the Padma Shri. We welcome you, sir. Our heartiest congratulations and regards on being awarded the Padma Shri for the year 2020, the fourth highest uh, civilian uh, award of the Republic of India for the, for the contribution to trade and industry. We warmly welcome you, sir. And uh, this spotlight session will be hosted by Mr. Aparup Sengupta, who is the executive chairman and global CEO of Startec. Mr. Sengupta is also the founder and chairman of Arj Global Group. We are happy to share that Arj Global Foundation School is launching their maiden global school styled in CBSE's curriculum in Vishnupur, Bakura, in West Bengal in April 2022. Arj Global Foundation School is going to be a very distinctive K-12 a school built on a sprawling 13-acre campus in the temple town of Vishnupur. This is a good announcement for West Bengal. The school will create global citizens directly from the interlands and perform and collaborate on a world stage. In addition, the same campus will have a place for an old age getaway, a residential home for the mature age celebrating life during the twilight years. The campus also plans to establish an institute of micro-entrepreneurial studies that will work with the local small business communities to revive, rejuvenate, and help re-engage with the larger marketplace using modern tools and technologies. Uh, Mr. Aparup Sangupta is leading this uh, school. And uh, most recently, just uh, you know, he was also the operating partner of Capital Square Partners. Previously, he was the executive chairman of Minax. And prior to that, Mr. Sangupta was the global CEO and MD at Aegis. He led Aegis's transformation from 60 million US dollars in revenues to over 850 million US dollars, company with 60,000 people in less than seven years. He has been part of the founding team uh, behind three successful startups, that is 24 by 7 Customer, Iron Idea, and Think Harbor. He has received several honors as the CEO of the year in the BPO landscape. He is also a mentor to several startups and supports entrepreneurship most passionately. We welcome you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the opening spotlight uh, session on accelerating digital, the India growth story. Over to you, Mr. Aparup Sengupta, sir, and Mr. Sanjeev Bikchandani, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Namaskar. And it's a pleasure to uh, be a host in this event. Uh, uh, Bengal is always a calling, being a Bengali. And uh, Sanjeev, we had a conversation last night. It is very inspiring to hear the story. And this is a person who came up from a typical middle-class Indian background where the aspirations and ambitions 
of the parents are to get educated well and to then get settled in a job, basically get a nokri. But lo and behold, I mean, here is a man who just gave it away and did not take a nokri, but created nokri.com that gave millions of people jobs and have created a fantastic organization. And at the back of it, he is also supporting a lot of startups. So it's a great privilege to have a conversation with you and know more about your stories. Uh, the theme is accelerating uh, digital, and uh, and that's the India story. And it's happening at the back of when some uh, of the finest digital companies are being led by Indians. So, which is a great moment for us. And India holds a huge promise, especially when I was looking at the startup data. I mean, clearly it shows that I mean there has been a tenfold increase in the unicorns that is born out of India. So, Sanjeev, going back to you, the first question, coming back from this humble background. How did it feel to start and jump into these waters in those times when startup or doing business was not heard of? So, so give us uh, this audience a sense of how did you start the early days of digital India? Well, uh, so the truth be told, Aparup, there was no big idea. There was no big ambition. There was a small ambition, right? And we took it step by step. So my small ambition in 97 when not Nokri was, if we, we took jobs, from 29 newspapers around the country and put them on the internet. It was a very simple business idea. Right? It didn't cost much money. We had no money in any case to spend. Right? But traffic began to come because people were interested in jobs. And when traffic began to come, we began to charge some money for listings. And a little bit, some money came and slowly, slowly we grew. And then we was venture capital, uh, you know, and then we grew slightly faster. Eventually we grew large enough to be listed. Uh, maybe eight years after we started knocking. So, Look, I'm the sort of person who did not have this grand vision. I did not have a big idea. I had a small idea, but right place, right time, worked hard, worked smart, got lucky, God was kind, and we came through. Right. Um, now, did I have a great vision when we started? Answer is no. But three years into it, did I evolve a vision? Answer is yes. So, you know, you, you take baby steps, and hopefully if things work out, you know, you, 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 you reach somewhere. No, that's, that's how it happened. Yeah, so I think it's a great message for the young uh, the people who want to uh, make their own startups. Everybody thinks that it has to be a big bang idea, but it did not necessarily be. I mean, if you understand the white space and if you know that there is a problem and there is a solution to that, one can always make a humble start. I mean, so that's 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 an amazing learning. So in that journey of the baby steps and which are the early days, I mean, there's a lot of new natal failure. I mean. Right in startups, people have an idea, they, they experiment with it, but they don't take it forward. So what are some of those critical moments in the early days, maybe the first six years, the obstacles that you encountered and how did you overcome those obstacles? I think the first thing is uh, we were a frugal company and we were personally very, very frugal. Right? For the first three years, I did not take a salary. Right? Now, if you're frugal and operating on low cost while delivering value to your customers, uh, you know, chances are you will at least break even and survive. And, you know, and in the beginning, survival is success, especially when you don't have capital. Okay. So first, I think lesson is be personally frugal when you're starting out. Okay. You will get to eat later. Right now, sacrifice. Excellent. So that means uh, many times, many a time, startup always thinks that you know what I need to get uh, run my house, and therefore I need some capital. I need to pay myself a salary. There has to be an element of sacrifice. Yeah. So look, obviously you have to live, you have to run your house. Okay. You can't starve and, and, and do a startup. The question is really, you know, I mean, what are the, what is the lifestyle you are trying to defend? What is the lifestyle you want to lead? How much are you willing to sacrifice? And you know, what are your bare essentials? Right. And somewhere, sometime when you don't have money, perhaps you have to just operate above bare essentials. So if you look at India, I mean, typically we are, especially if you go back to our generation and your generation when we grew up, I mean, there was a culture of celebrating if you are a first, if you are a second in a class and you are kind of disregarded if you are a failure. But if you look at great organizations and great countries which have given birth to a lot of entrepreneurs, they celebrate failures. So how do we bring that culture? Of oh, I think it's happening. I, I tell you what, it's happening. Uh, you don't necessarily celebrate failure. But you see, you see, I tell you, when I quit my job in 1990, and I was working for the Holix company, and Calcutta was a big market. West Bengal was a big market, so I, I'm familiar with, uh, you know, and I, I, I love Calcutta, by the way. I love visiting Calcutta, I love the food, I love the people, I love the culture. 
and I've been there at least two dozen times in the last uh, maybe 10, 15 years. Uh, so, you know, uh, so when I was working in uh, HMM then, now Glaxo Spitline, the Holix company, and I was the marketing person on Holix. Uh, you know, it was in, in, in the late 80s, early 90s, if you were an educated person working in a large corporation on a good corporate track, and if you quit your job to be an entrepreneur, and you came back after three, four years saying, hey, it didn't work out, I want to come back. You know, your career was over because uh, nobody valued that experience. Right? Uh, today, people have begun to value that experience. Hey, if he's been an entrepreneur, he's got a 360 degree view of the organization. He's been an entrepreneur really. He's done sales also, manufacturing also, sourcing also, costing also, finance also, accounting also, you know, filing in return also. He has all round experience. This is a great experience. We want entrepreneurial people. So today, corporate India, Indian society, values entrepreneurial experience even if you did not build a successful company. But you got that 360 degree experience. And now this is this has changed actually. This is a very good thing. So things are changing. Excellent. So uh, I, I will go back to and bring a little bit of Bengal flavor. I mean, there's a Bengali phrase called Ama Shantan Jano Thake Dure Bhate. I'll just say, I translate that in English, which is an emotion of a Bengali mother who basically aspires his child to be fed well, especially milk and rice with a spoon of sugar as a classical dessert, which is uh, kind of a sign of affluence. So that's one emotion on the one hand uh, that uh, Bengali mother has. And at the same time, if you go back to the earlier days, uh, the emotion is that uh, she would give her ornaments and give it to that young child to support uh, the freedom struggle and if required to die for the nation. So these are two extremes that you see. So in this whole idea of what you call this passion, emotion, revolution, what are some of the characteristics that you see are recipes of potential success for startups? Uh, what really matters? Is it academics or is it attitude? Is it emotion, passion, or is it the idea? So I think, I think uh, the first thing is, uh, no matter what you're doing today, work hard at it. So hard work is a habit you must inculcate. Focus and hard work and deep commitment. So if you're studying today, do your best. If you're playing a game today, do your best. If you're doing a startup tomorrow, do your best. The first thing is do your best, try hard. Right? No matter what you are doing. Right? Uh, the second is for a startup. You see, one thing I like to tell people is that successful businesses are built on deep customer insights. Right? When I was working, uh, on Holix, I used to observe that when the office copy of Business India would come in, everybody would read it from the back because there were 35 to 40 pages of appointment ads in the back of Business India in those days. And from there, I understood that, that job information is a, something people are interested in, which is where the germ of the idea of Nokri was sown. Where seven years later, I simply aggregated jobs and put them on. There is a customer insight. Amazing. So, so therefore, if you focus on the customer, stay close to us, understand what the customer is thinking. It's really important. So absolutely. So any company that is born customer out and then you, the probability of success is very high. Much higher. Yeah. So I think Professor Ronajay Gulati of Harvard Business School makes this point, uh, which is building for resilience. Is He says that the last hundred years was all about manufacturing and distribution. That means you made a product or a service and then you had a sales organization and then you sold. But I think he's saying the next 100 years is going to be outside in as opposed to inside out. To find out what is the white space for the customers and come back. So it's a very valid point that you've raised that. You know, the best person, the best person who did this was Steve Jobs. Yes. I mean, he created products where he understood the customer so well that even the customer did not articulate this is what I want. He said the customer will want this. Right. I know the customer. And he produced the the iPod, the iPhone, yes. all these things. Fragments of them were already available in the marketplace. He just aggregated them and gave it in a... But he understood the customer. He will want this. So, so wonderful. So reading a magazine backwards, I, I still go back when you said that I was remembering in our engineering college in the library, we used to get this magazine called Data Quest. And the third and fourth year student would always go to the last page where the ads were as to what are the jobs in computer yes. science or mechanical engineering. And then they rate about content. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a journalistic event. AVP understand that. So, real customers are going back to what matters to them. I mean, in addition to stories. And that's how this idea of Nokri was born.
So when, uh, when after that, when you went and uh, did uh, uh, and sponsored many startups, uh, what are the attributes that you look at uh, within entrepreneurs uh, and can see early warning or early morning sunshine of potential success? What are some of those? Traits? So we look at, of course, the quality of the team and their commitment and their capabilities, right? And their integrity and you know all of that. Uh, but we also look at uh, early signs of natural attraction, what we call natural attraction, or we look at uh, what's the real, how, how powerful is the value proposition? Or we ask a question, you know, uh, ye idea kahan se aya? where did you get this idea from? And okay. depending on the answer they give, uh, we get to know a lot. So in the case of Zomato, when I met Deepinder Goyal for the first time, I asked him the same question, where did you get the idea from? And he told me a story. He said, uh, I was working in Bain Consulting after graduating from IIT in Gurgaon. It was an office of 50 or 60 people. And uh, there was, you know, most were male, most were single, would not get lunch from home. Consulting hours were long. You invariably ended up having lunch and dinner in the office. The office had a cafeteria with it that would not serve food, but you could get your own food and eat it there. So people would order in from restaurants. To make life easy, for the employees, the admin team had compiled a file folder of all the delivery menu cards of all the restaurants that deliver there, right? That location. And he said, you know, at one o'clock in the afternoon, it's lunchtime, I'm hungry, I've got lots of work. I have to wait 20 minutes to access the file folder. It's a shared folder in the cafeteria. Then I get two minutes to look at it. Then I phone up and order the food. Then I go back to my desk, but the food will come in one, one hour. Then I come back and eat the food. It's a huge pain, right? So I, one Saturday I came in, and I scanned all the menus and uploaded them on my personal page on the office internet. And two days later, the IT infrastructure guy came to me and said, what have you done? Why is 95% of the internal traffic going to your page? And the penny dropped and I realized that it's not just my problem, it's everybody's problem. And there is value in aggregating menu cards. Just as I learned this value in aggregating jobs 15 years earlier, he learned this value in aggregating menu cards. And on weekends, you're going to go out to all restaurants in Delhi NCR and just picking up the delivery menu cards. And when he had 800, he scanned them and he put them on the net and he called it Food eBay, which later became Zomato. But traffic came from day one because he had got that customer insight. Absolutely, absolutely. This is such an inspiring story. In fact, uh, these kind of ideas which are born and when it scales, I mean, it actually changes lives. Uh, Sanjeev, I'll just tell you a very interesting story which I personally share so far as Nokri is concerned. I was at that point in time CEO of Iron Idea, one of the startups that Rocky talked about. I remember that we used to hire a lot of people and they used to work in our Bangalore office and then we used to send them to the US and then process the green card and they used to settle down in the US. And we were working for a satellite project. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the SAT project, the Iridium, we worked on that and we worked on the middleware. And that's the time when we were hiring a lot of people and then suddenly uh, the HR person came and says that there is a company that has come up called Nokri.com, you have to pay 500 rupees subscription and you can get as many number of resumes as you want and they'll apply. So uh, I was the first uh, person to subscribe probably in Bangalore. I mean, because earlier they, you gave a free trial, but I paid that 500 rupees a month and 6,000 for a year. And lo and behold, I mean, uh, today, I mean, uh, it has changed lives. So I know at least a thousand people that has gone through me who are now well settled in the US and working with green card and some of them are citizens. So some of these ideas actually make life-changing stuff like Zomato did during this lockdown period. People celebrated with the best of meals within their homes because Zomato existed and uh, they had this heroic team that was uh, servicing these goods. So uh, in this uh, whole idea, one is the ideation, idea kaha se aya, you asked. Then uh, in terms of academics and attitudes or maybe is, is it an A plan which is important and a B team or a or a B plan with an A team? What, what really works? What, what the team at? has to be A class, yes. right? Because an A class team will change the business plan and the business plan is B class, right? But you can't run an A class business plan with a B class team and succeed. It doesn't work. Okay. Uh, and and how, do you, how do you assess an A class team? I mean, typically. Oh, well, it's over conversations, it's over, you know, several, I mean, several meetings. And then finally, you take a bet, and sometimes they're wrong. Right. I mean, so you do it wrong. Right. 
in a startup there's a very interesting culture especially early stage uh, a phrase that is used called spray and pray that means you invest in about 20 companies and then pray maybe two will succeed and balance 18 will just wind up is that a true statement or there is well, some, some people do it like that but if you're slightly smarter then you won't spray and pray you will take judicious bets and pray and then out of 20 it won't be two who will succeed it might be seven or eight who will succeed so as an entrepreneur and uh, in current times uh, there is uh, is a huge amount of digital penetration that is happening smartphones are there in almost uh, in the hands of all indians uh, thanks to the phenomenal telecom revolution that has happened in this country what are some of the areas that you believe are huge potential so far as india is concerned so we don't invest top down we do it bottom up we meet up a few hundred startups every quarter and we see which ones to back right okay. Okay, but having said that, look, it's pretty obvious fintech will change lives. Right. It's pretty obvious AI, machine learning, crypto will be huge. It's right. pretty obvious what is called Web3 will be huge going forward. Right. Uh, but having said that, we, uh, you know, we go bottom up. We don't, we don't have preconceived notions that this is where we'll invest. If right. we had that, we would never have invested in Zomato or Policy Absolutely. Because they were pioneers, you know, they were the first in their sectors. And... Uh, we would never have thought of them. Right. So basically, you go ground up and then look at those ideas. Yeah, and we, we try to see what's bubbling through. Low class or What are people thinking? Okay. So you don't. So for example, I mean, there's a huge amount of uh, potential uh, healthcare void in the country. I mean, it is. Yes. Not so we we believe health tech will be big, but you see, even once you believe that, you will then have to find the right company. Right. So somebody has to come up with a problem and a solution to a problem, That's right. and thereby uh, once they have. Uh, proven that uh, that's that, that's a great time to start. Right. So so therefore, I mean, if you look at the digital India uh, concept uh, that is now uh, spreading like bonfire, uh, are you seeing a trend uh, within people uh, that they would only want to do a startup and not do a job? And therefore, but it has become a pretty much a mainstream career aspiration. You know, I if I look back to my two years at IMM Dawat, if you had polled the classes and how many of you want to be an entrepreneur, maybe five or ten hands would have gone up. Today, maybe 40% of the hands will go up. So it's become much more mainstream. Right. So, uh, so when they want to become entrepreneur, if you have you peeled the layer that is it that the joy of doing something on your own or or the huge amount of economic success that you get uh, is... I, I don't think people are more motivated, motivated so much by the money because they know money will only come much later and only to very few people. Right. And there's a risk involved. But I do believe people want to have a shot at something great. And making a difference so now if you look at the indian uh, uh, economic uh, landscape and the canvas uh, the country has, there's a huge population of sme in fact a significant part of the nation's contribution not the gdp uh, is coming from the sme and they are not necessarily unicorns so what is your message to that ordinary graduate who is trying to start a business and uh, maybe run and run a comfortable life as opposed to maybe joining a job and then going career progression uh, and and let's say if that is in the area of digital which is non-linear in nature uh, is there is there something that they can look at that whether i should go this way or that way is, is there something well, i was like that i didn't want to build a big company i was right. very happy running a small company i just wanted to do something independent creative uh, where i'm my own boss i'm controlling my own time i decide what to do when right and that was my joy uh, it so happened that we ended up doing something big but I would have been very happy just being something small as long as it was sustainable and profitable. So small is beautiful. I mean, that's how small you can be beautiful. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so wonderful. In fact, in fact, there are so many stories of small companies who have passed on their baton through generations and they have not necessarily scaled, but they continue to basically be, uh, and that's uh, fine. And that's great. Absolutely. So, so I, I talk of this whole progress will, and I think you are basically live that life, which is believe, behave and become. So Absolutely. you did not work for the become. You believed in yourself. You loved it. You wanted to be your own boss, and then you worked hard, and it's then it happened. It happened, and don't chase the happening. Right. You know, so money is the happy incidental outcome of doing something you love. Right. Right. So wonderful. So so with that, I will just go back to uh, some of the elements uh, of uh, this this question everybody asked. I mean, Samuel Samuel Pierpont Langley. Is a name that is not heard of. 
Uh, and uh, he was the competitor of the Wright brothers. I mean, Wright brothers had no funding, but they had a full of passion and emotion and they wanted to build uh, the world's first aircraft. And Samuel Pierpont Langley had uh, the entire set of resources. Uh, uh, he was a Harvard alumni professor, uh, alumni. He had the funding. He had, I think, in those days, raised $50 million. But the first aircraft uh, went to the Wright brothers, and he quit. So, uh, so, so what would you talk of this kind of characteristic that who accumulate a lot of funding and goes into a grand project, fails and never goes and into that area at all, as opposed to somebody who's uh, in the hinterland trying to do something and take an aircraft up and, and he succeeds. So what are the learnings that we can take? And especially the youngsters who are aspiring uh, to contribute in this nation. I mean, so, they so look, look, entrepreneurship is activistic. It can come from anywhere. We have invested in a company from Kota, two companies from Indore. These are not normal startup locations. Right. But today, uh, you know, young people everywhere want to do startups. You know, uh, if, you, if, you, if you talk to a Delhi government school child, they also want to do startups. They are government schools. They're not your, you know, IIT, IM guys. So I think uh, the bug of entrepreneurship is now everywhere. And the truth is success can come from anywhere. And therefore, you know, my only message is Lage Raho. Keep at it. So Lage Raho Munna Bhai is, a, is, is something that we should take that as a Lage Raho startup bhai. Absolutely. And support them, support them and do hard work. Look, you know your story. Yeah? You built a customer 24-7. I mean, what was it like then? You tell us. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you this story. I mean, when we were trying to do, we, we had our first customer where we had, we had just 10 people doing email support. So this is not going to scale, so let's go and pack our bags and go back. And in that journey, we said that having the ability to understand uh, uh, American English and converse in that is very important. So we trained a bunch of uh, people in American accent. And then I went and gave a presentation to one of the largest BPOs in the world, uh, inviting them to come and open the shop in India. So when I gave the presentation and uh, the person who heard it, he was an executive vice president reporting directly to the president. I'm not naming him. He told me one very interesting stuff and uh, which was kind of hit me under the belt. He says, Aparup, it's a fantastic, passionate presentation, but you guys speak very good Java. So that's the time when India was sending a lot of programmers and Java was picking up. They were Java programmers. He was like hitting me under the belt that, you know what, you write good Java language. You probably speak Java but you don't know how to speak American language. So then I actually recorded a conversation which was fictitious and I played it. And then um, that person uh, heard it and says, oh, this uh, lady is from Louisiana. So I wish I could say Louisiana, but she was from Bangalore. And then I said, you know what? This is something that uh, is from a lady who has just gone through a 14 days accent neutralization program. She doesn't have a passport. The farthest she has got is 50 miles. And we have 1 million of them and it's going to cost about $3 an hour. He canceled his appointments for the next day. And thereafter, the entire bunch of work came. We got Microsoft, we got Compaq, we got AT&T, we got Citibank. So, so that, as you rightly said, that we prepared ourselves. We did the hard work that was, we will not come back. We will not come back with the sense of failure. We will at least tell ourselves that we will make it happen. And today, I think BPO industry is one of the largest. That's a very uh, inspiring story. Very inspiring. I mean, look, look, what I gather from that story is two, three things. Number one, you were facing complete failure. And this is the last ditch effort. Right? You were ready to pack your bags. Ek bari try karte. Correct. Okay? The first yeah. lesson, uh, it's about persistence and resilience. I will not give up. I will try one more time. Second is, you had a very powerful value prop. And you had a very powerful value prop. This kind of quality at this kind of price. Right. Very powerful value prop. And, and therefore, you need, you need a good value prop to succeed as a, as a company, right? And, 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 and the third is, look, you had a very good idea of how you should be selling, right? So, an entrepreneur fundamentally has to be a good salesman. Yes. If you sell your idea to your customer, your colleagues, your co-founders, your investors, whoever, you have to be a good salesman. So, persistence, resilience, salesman. So Sanjeev, since it's happening at the back of Bengal, I think the Honorable Minister is also here. We are, we are going to start our Institute of Micro Entrepreneurial Studies in Bishnupur. We have taken a campus there where uh, I intend to invest capital, small capital and help with all the management learnings we had and see if they can scale. 
So what are some of the stuff that you believe should be done for these small, small micro enterprises who can, who can really succeed and become big in life? I think uh, the, again, a good product which is needed for understanding customer needs, building the product to satisfy those needs, and then good salesmanship. These just focus on these three things. Wonderful. So I think with that, I think we have uh, kind of completed our time. It's 2.31. Sanjeev, it was a brilliant conversation we had. So much of learning, especially the youngsters uh, who will be a participant in this entire journey of uh, accelerating India and digital India and at the back of Bengal. And uh, uh, we are doing this conversation. Uh, somebody said if Bengal thinks today, India thinks tomorrow. I think the whole idea of digital proliferation, I mean, giving birth to micro entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises, I mean, Bengal will be a very, very strong location for us. Absolutely. It will spread all over the country. And I'm a firm believer of that. And I have so far, my experience has been fantastic. And I think people like you should come more often and inspire people and especially the youngsters in the hinterland so that they can make this a great state and a great Absolutely. State. I mean, Bengal has a great future. Thank you so much. I mean, thank with you. This, this, I hand it over to Rocky and uh, thank you very much for thank the you so much. conversation. Thanks, Rocky. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sanjeev sir and Aproop sir, for joining us for this amazing Spotlight session. It's been an honor to have you both today. And thank you so much for taking time out. I hope all of you have enjoyed this session.